In this video, we'll look at the remote control and secondary execution capabilities of Color Space. Both these exist within the profiling window within Graph Options. And you can see here that we have secondary execution and remote control. At the moment, the remote control is greyed out because we don't have a probe connected. So if we connect to uh, the i1 Display Pro, and back to the options, we can see that remote control is now available. And this first window, we're going to make a servant. Now, servant and master defines which profile window is controlling which. So if we open a second profiling window, and we'll just move that out the way, and Again, we need to connect to a probe because the remote control options will only become available when there is a probe connected. But because this is going to be the master, we're actually going to connect just to the virtual probe because we don't particularly care about the readings uh, generated because we're interested in the probe associated with the servant window. So having connected that, we can now select master. And in this instance, we are working with a single color space um, installation, so a single instance of color space with two profiling windows open connected to two different probes, one being the i1 Display Pro and the other being the virtual probe. The system with the virtual probe is the master, and the servant window is the one connected to the i1 D3. We'll come back to the ability to use two real probes uh, or more in a moment, but for now, what we're interested in is just using the servant window to remotely profile a display. At the moment, we are using one instance of color space, but we could actually be using two different instances of color space, either on the same PC or obviously more usefully on two different PCs connected via a network or even connected over the internet. In that situation, the ID wouldn't just be the, uh, the port ID, it would be the IP address um, of the remote installation uh, plus the uh, ID for the port. So, having connected everything up, we can define from the master uh, the profile that we wish to generate, and we'll do a, a primary only, that's fine. So in the uh, remote, we'll pop up the patch window with the uh, probe uh, sitting on top of it. Just so we can see it, we'll also pop up the patch window for the uh, master profiling configuration. And now when we start to measure, you can see that the remote servant profiling window is plotting the measurements from the i1d3, while the master window is plotting the random values generated by the virtual probe. Ah, oh, nice cup of tea. There we go, characterization complete. And now in the servant window, we have the profile data for the display via the i1d3, while in the master window, we have the random generated information for the virtual probe. Obviously, in the servant window, we can now save the profile, rename it, whatever, as usual. Now, that's all well and good, but if we were doing a remote calibration session where we have the master color space instance in the uh, calibrator's office and the remote secondary or servant uh, color space instance um, in a, a client location connected via the internet. We don't want the information to be just held locally on the remote instance. We want it to appear in the master. And we can do that by saying that we want the measurement data within the master to be the remote data. And if we now remeasure, so again, just so we can see it, we'll put it back into manual measure there and go back and do a primary only again. 
And yes, obviously, we know that uh, it's going to wipe out that data and start again, which is fine. And you can see that this time, as the measurements are being taken via the real I1D3 on the servant instance of Color Space, the master is receiving the same data over the uh, network connection. At the moment we have the second window here, but it's, it's not being used because there is no probe taking any readings. Even though we are connected to the virtual probe here, there is actually no data being generated. The, uh, the connection is just to enable the remote control to be active. And you can see that the, the data between the two is identical. Whilst the master is actually working in characterization mode, and you can see that from the um, thermometer, um, the secondary or servant window um, is, is actually doing exactly the same thing in characterization, um, but it shows you one patch at a time so that you see it as, as if you were doing a localized manual measurement. And there we are, characterization complete, and we now have exactly the same data on both displays. So that shows how you can use a master servant configuration for remote profiling, because obviously now we can use this data to generate a lookup table or, or modify it or you know, use it in any way that we would as a, uh, a local data set. But another option is if, as with here, we're using a, a single instance of color space with two profiling windows open, we can actually connect two real probes and measure the same patch simultaneously. So if we disconnect the virtual probe, and in this time connect an I1 Pro 3, and calibrate it, and we will now set the probe so that it is reading exactly the same patch as the I1D3. And we'll go back to looking at remote values for the two probes. This time we'll do a um, memory colors with secondaries. Start and yes. And this time we are reading both probes on the same patch simultaneously and color space will wait for the slower probe to take its patch reading before continuing with the next patch giving you a combined simultaneous reading for both probes on the same patch on the same display if you're wondering why there is a gray triangle appeared on this instance but not on this instance it's because here, because we're effectively using manual measure um, as the mode, and we can see that what we're seeing is a gamut triangle level because there's been a, a read of the 229, 229, 229 patches. Over on the master, it is doing a characterization um, and it will not pop up the gamut triangle until the profiling has finished. And there we go characterization complete and now you can see that we have a difference in the readings because one is using the i1d3 with the generic CMF setting while the master window is using the i1 Pro 3 and you can see that the graphs are now different because one in the servant window is the profile as read via the i1 Display Pro OEM with the generic CMF setting, while the master is the i1 Pro 3, um, giving us obviously a significantly different uh, set of readings because the two probes are different and there has been no probe matching performed. And one final rather useful capability when doing the master servant configuration with remote control is we can actually average the readings between the two probes. So if we do exactly the same again, this time it will take the same patch reading from both probes and average the readings so that we get a 
combined result. Obviously, doing it with a, an i1 Pro 3 and an OEM um, i1 Display Pro is kind of a weird combination, but it could be quite a useful feature. And we will be adding more options into this approach of having multiple windows. And I do mean multiple windows. We're working with two here, but you could have three or more profile windows open, all connected to different probes, potentially on three or four different displays, all being profiled simultaneously. And there we are. Characterization complete. And now on the master window we have an average of the readings between the two probes while on the servant window we have the um, OEM i1 Display Pro readings native. Now the servant window doesn't just have to be controlled via um, a, another instance of colour space or a, a, another instance of the profiling window. Um, it can actually be controlled by a third-party program and we provide source code for a demo program which just uses uh, here a command prompt and you can see that we have um, a remote control example and if we execute the .exe you can see that now the remote control program is controlling the profiling window and in this instance performing a, uh, a generic uh, cube profile. So if you have uh, a software developer uh, accessible um, you can take our uh, example source code and write your own program to uh, perform profiling. Now, as well as the remote control, we have what's called secondary execution. And what this will do is send each patch that is being read uh, back to a third party external program. And again, we have provided a batch file within Color Space to show this. And I will, as it says, remove the text and with the batch file there we can navigate to the batch file on the desktop enable secondary execution and when we now perform a profile primary only start yep and the batch file will generate, in this instance, a .txt file with all the measurement data. Obviously that depends on the program being used for secondary execution as to what happens with the data, but with our example batch file that is included with Color Space, it writes this uh, text file on the desktop for you. And there we are. Characterization complete. We have the profile data obviously within the color space profiling window, but also we have all the data recorded into the text file, um, including the patch sent, the XYZ, uh, YXY, Delta E values, um, all recorded into the text file as controlled by the executable program, in this case, our example batch file. So if you have access to a coder, you can develop any executable program that you want that can extract data from color space and use it to do alternative profile plotting, um, basically use the data in any way that you choose.